so good to see also people who are returning from a long time. Like it's interesting this summer. Okay, recordings in. Hello everyone. I hope well, first of all, thank you so much for showing in. Um, my name is Ferdinando Castro and alongside Jusha and Marcus. Uh, we're gonna be your officers today directing this conversation and kind of like moderating it. As usual, I'm gonna give you the the house rules. Um, for those who are new, please check if you have your chat because we use it a lot. Uh, if you don't know what your chat is, it's normally like up in the application. It has like a bubble, like a text bubble. Um, we use it a lot because that's how we know who's gonna be speaking first, who's gonna be speaking last and so on and so on. Uh, if you're a little bit in the shy area and, or your mic is not working, just uh, feel free to text there and I will read it. Um, everything that we're going to be saying here will be recorded and published on YouTube. So you typing and me reading it is it, a way for us to record your uh, thoughts on YouTube. And then you can see how. So please don't touch the recording. Um, this recording will be available for everyone here. You only have to ask. Uh, you don't even have to ask. You just have to go to the general chat and it will be there. So mm, you don't have to click recording. It's already been recorded to you. All right. And I feel like I have to start from zero again because there is like a, some delays there. OK, it's fine. Uh, this is a new introduction. Da -da 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 -da. We do have an intro. I'm just going to. All right. Anyways, we're wasting too much time. Um, yes, so we uh, right, please, if you want to go into the queue to start talking, write an exclamation mark on the chat. I'm going to keep track on everything that is being uh, happening there. Uh, but that's our cue to know who is going to be first and last. If you raise your hand, I may see you, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to know which is your um, cue. So just write that, and again, just type whatever, and I'm going to make sure that all of you participate uh, properly. All right, uh, with that being said, um, and see, normally this is the moment where I just give the floor to you so you can do some proper introductions and announcements. All right, folks, thank you for joining us. This is the Dallas College Philosophy Club Summer Sessions, Summer Edition. Uh, I do apologize for missing last week's meeting. Um, Fernando told me that he couldn't make it. Lucas told me he couldn't make it. Yusha told what? me he couldn't make it. Are I now realize really? it's conspired to keep me from coming to the last meeting. Why are you saying? That sounds so <laughs> such a lie. Oh my God. I will I will see to that, don't you worry. At any rate, here I am making my triumphant return. Um, Looking forward to today's topic. Uh, looking forward to, I guess, the introduction to it because once again, I wasn't around to see sort of how students arrived at this particular uh, topic, uh, which is a rather, I would say, uh, extreme. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if extreme. It depends on your mentality. It can be before, very well. Uh, very. Uh, so again, check us out on social media. As Fernando was saying, you can find all the videos on YouTube. Um, search Dallas College Philosophy Club. We're on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, social media, all over the place. Uh, and then we have our own website as well. Now, I do have some questions prepared for the topic that I developed, but, but again, I don't know the context. So I will turn it over because usually I introduce the topic, give us some context, but I will turn it over to Professor Ulrich and the, uh, the members <laughs> of the club who were there yesterday. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say that. Uh, I, I don't necessarily see an organic development uh, from what we were discussing to this topic, but as I as I've been thinking about it, uh, a couple things have come to mind because it, it, it's a, it's a desire about the future uh, for me. That's what this this topic is uh, going towards, and a desire to understand what human beings are going to be. Uh, in the future, uh, as, as well as our political and social arrangements. So, um, with with that um, with that caveat, I suppose we don't necessarily have to focus on colonizing other planets or the, uh, planets or the stars or whatever it is. But what what is where are we going in the future? And uh, do you see a separation from? Uh, a, a complete separation from our way of life now towards our way of life at some point in the future is it, are things too destructive now is, is the environmental problems whatever else was uh, came to mind when this topic came up i i don't know uh, i want to okay. leave it i want to leave it open okay but 
can I say something? Because the person who introduced this topic is here and he's very calmly drinking his water. No, he's chill. He doesn't care if the planets are going to get destroyed today or not. But I feel like since you introduced it, it might be well if you actually give us your thoughts on why you proposed this topic. So Marcus, go yeah. take it from here. Um, so the idea behind the topic is where do we see the progression of man going in the coming, you know, ages, you know, um, we've gone from cavemen to middle ages, blah, 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 to, you know, industrial revolution, blah, 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 to now the modern day. So what is next? You know, what, what do we see like the encapsulation of like the human future going? Are we supposed to, or is it possible for us to conquer, you know, um, destroying the process of destroying you know the planet that we've already started um uh are we supposed to never solve that problem and then eventually have to you know colonize mars etc and uh move on to being extraplanetary and doom our original home um elon musk actually said recently that there's like a what was it he said a population like oh he was really he was focusing on the population he was like People need to move to Mars right now, essentially. <laughs> and, um, you know, it begs the question then are we supposed to solve our current problems in our self destruction and, uh, you know, prevent the destruction of Earth and ourselves and, uh, you know, kind of essentially make a peace or utopia essentially from you would think you derive uh, uh, a utopia from that? Um, or are we supposed to just accidentally destroy Earth and be like, oopsie? Um, don't worry, we'll just go over to Mars and start trying to terraform it, whatever. And now humans can never be destroyed because we're extraplanetary and no single event can blah, blah, blah. But are we supposed to be like that? Are we supposed to, like, are we, should we be? Like, do we want, like, the shitty people that we are to, like, never have an end? You know what I'm saying? Like, are we supposed to, mm -hmm. um, are we supposed to solve our current predicaments and, uh, and, you know, rock on with earth that's the question you know what are you supposed to do what do we what do we see ourselves becoming okay um before i move it on to israel um there are a couple of points that you were touching um I, okay i would like to think that as uh, as a species if we actually move away from another country and we see a destruction that something changes i mean we are biologically proclaimed to you know just kind of change even physically depending on our environment so if your physique change, your mentality can change. I just don't know how that looks like in the future. Um, but okay, I'm just interested to see how other people are. So they recap? No. Oh, I see. You mean the meeting? Okay, sorry. So go ahead, Israel. Okay. So um, hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining. It's been a long time. I hope everyone's having a great summer. And uh, I hope I, I, I'm happy to see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new ones as well. So, hey guys. Um, okay, so that's an intriguing question. And I think the first thing right off the bat that comes to my head is that um, if we presumably, let's say that, yeah, we have the ability to move on to another planet and we are able to um, basically colonize and kind of keep the human race going on that other planet, what's to guarantee that um, we're not going to trash that planet and then try to look for a new one as well, because that's what, we, what we've what we done in the first place, right? So if we're not able to correct that mistake the first time around, what what kind of guarantees can we put in place or what, what essentially in human nature, what kind of a behavior guarantees that, okay, that same pattern is not going to repeat itself on the other planet or the other place? Apart from that, another question comes in that right now, Earth seems to be a um, kind of a all-encompassing, uh, needs-fulfilling kind of a thing. Like we're, we're adapted to Earth where we have breathable air, where we have clean water to use, we have food that grows here that we can consume and gain energy from and so on. But presumably if the other planets are barren and that's not totally equipped to handle human life yet or support any kind of life yet in order to manipulate or mold that planet enough so that human life can sustain in there aren't we going to be breaking the planet as a result in terms of where 
taking it away from what it's supposed to be naturally and we're kind of molding it and forcing it to bend in a way that it doesn't naturally bend. So I guess that would be my like further question ahead for everybody in terms that um, what kind of guarantees um, our behavior that we're not going to wreck the next planet either um, by like not putting in the proper procedures or not caring for it enough where we can say, oh, if we've done it once, we can do it again. We'll just go on to a new planet. Yeah, I do want to say something. It's a disclaimer. Um, this conversation is not formal. Like uh, you have to be like so formal and you have to use the proper terminology. We tend to be very informal. So feel free to just, you know, bring your most outrageous thinking and then we just kind of like shape them because that's how we are going to get more from this. Don't hold back in these kind of cases. Um, I, I do have to say something. Um, I, th I think we already have some examples, just not planetary wide, uh, where people are kind of like conflicted whether we need to continue the way we go or not. Uh, for instance, like every time there has been like a world war or like a sudden like global warming or something like that, we have those people who kind of like are more mindful how we're like affecting our surroundings and try to like be more protective. But we, we have the other one who see are more like a, the utility of what we can gain from the resources that they cannot like don't mind. I mean, as far as I can think of right now, I'm imagining that something similar could happen that we can have those who say, hey, the answer is not moving planet to planet until we don't have any more planets. But we're going to be others that say like, you know what? It's too expensive to find a solution. We don't have the time. Just keep drilling those planets and just keep them like rolling, you know? I'm assuming something like that in that regard um, because it seems the pattern so far. And I, who knows, maybe from there it comes like a whole planetarian war and there you go. That, that's more fun, you know, like the type of movies that Mansi likes. He likes Marvel. If you ever want to give Mansi a, a, a gift, give him a, a superhero movie or book, he will love it. Um, totally, I guarantee you. So anyways, uh, I see uh, Jesus is here, so you're next. Uh, go ahead. Your, your, mic's not, your mic's not on here. Yeah. yeah, I'm still learning how to read minds. But I see. Oh, you can't read minds yet? Okay, then. But like <laughs> no, I was saying, I'll, I'll, I'll remember to give Manzi a good old on Spider-Man comic. But after that, I do want to say, um, reading this question, I'd say, uh, honestly, I, I always have this, I have a issue where I feel like most of my answers are mostly cop-outs. But in terms of like the future of man, I feel like it'd be more of the answer of a public opinion in, in, in that sort of thing in terms of like, you know, colonizing the planets and the stars and everything. I'd say, I'd say because it could be like, I say, why not be both in a way? Because honestly, there is there's like interest for people. I mean, there's a double both interest for people for one to save the planet and as well as to like, you know, go out and an adventure. Um, I, I, I just feel like that, but especially as it's more of a question that it will be like more that will be like, I guess, answered or be truly more applicable at a later date. But, if, if, but at that point, I do feel like at that point we would have the equipment and such to do both. Um, that's all I have so far. I mean, I'm going to try to complicate the topic a little bit more. Okay. What happens if we go to a planet and there is a layer in life in there? Oh, say that again? What happens if there is life already in the planet that we visit? I mean, well, it's likely if we go there that there should be like some type of, you know, living well, form. If we're it's actually going to be life from a lot of disease. Well, it's going to be us, it's going to be uh, them, it's going to be both. Well, 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 Do I think... hear colonization? I mean, uh, there is honestly, no law against it, you know, it's aliens. Like, we don't have anything that says you should not kill aliens. Is that uh, included in any religion? Well, that is true, but I mean, manifest destiny, but whatever. Look, I'm just saying that, like, <laughs> honestly, that's also another question, depending on how it would go. Let's say the alien life form isn't that, you know, it's it's just like to a level like, a, like you could like basically domesticate it and have it as a pet, you know, it's it's not like. Where it has like civilizations and stuff. They're, they're, you know? they're like dogs, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, and we yeah, you know, it's, it's you, know you, 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 you give them head pats or whatever, throw them a bone or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah why not? You know, yeah. you know, they make us happy, we make them happy. Perfect. Yeah. If it's a, yeah. if it's a, a good boy, they are, they are the good exactly. boys. Exactly. If it's like, if it's like a bacteria or whatever that can kill us, like it's some kind of war of the worlds, um, avoid it. But in the case of it's like another civilization. 
I feel like that'd be kind of a more, uh, it's up, it's more of a, a, more of a kind of a relationship kind of thing, you know. If it works out, you know, we'll, you know, we would like, you know, link up and everything. If that's submissive, then it's all good. Exactly. You know exactly. Yes. Exactly. I'm, I'm just saying we'll buy all of it for about two dollars. I mean, I'm just saying, why not? <laughs> it could work out, honestly. But yeah, you can like show I, them. You can show them shiny rocks, and you can get them to try like really good technology. That can happen. It worked in the past. Why not? Like, you know. I feel like I read that in a, in a book before. Ah, uh, whatever. But yeah, that's what I'd say. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Mansi, you're next. Hey, thanks. Um, sorry, I got a message. Somebody's trying to access the chat, or rather the Teams page, but they're having trouble. Um, yeah, okay. so uh, I want to go on something that was just said, actually, about the idea of the relationship. Because um, here's how I'm understanding the topic. Uh, what is well, I, I'll put it like this. It's a question of what's called philosophical anthropology. So philosophical anthropology, anthropology, again, is the study of, of humans. Anthros, anthropos, it's Greek for uh, man. So the study of humanity. Uh, philosophical anthropology is the study of what is a human philosophical. I think a big, big part of that question is what is humanity's relationship to its habitat, it's, it's dwelling, uh, the planet Earth. And it seems like with this idea of, I guess, uh, what's now become perhaps a necessity to drain the Earth of its resources for the sake of um, human sustenance and maybe human luxury, uh, the question does become, are human beings still, because originally we were, but are human beings still considered part of the Earth Organically speaking, are, are we still natural or have human beings sort of crossed the threshold into now we're more technological? Now we're not of the earth, we're just on the earth. And we could be on other planets too. And we can learn how to use their resources. So it's not so much that we're an integral part of nature as a whole relative to the planet earth, but now we're something that is, I suppose, beyond it. Or in some ways, maybe even. I suppose, at odds with it, when you consider natural disasters as maybe the Earth's natural inclination to preserve itself, uh, not suggesting a consciousness to the planet, mind you, but just, again, natural natural mechanisms that come from the sapping of resources. So I, I kind of like framing the topic in, in terms of just what is a human being now? And what does our changing relationship to our very planet suggest about what we've become? Uh, Nancy, your your mic is mute. Your mic is muted. We couldn't hear a single thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Te technology, fellas. You're better uh, off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we dodged that bullet. All right. I mean, great thoughts as always. Uh, I guess we can always just move to um, a, a, an alien of our own. Yeah, he sometimes turns yellow. Sometimes he disappears from the chat. I mean, and sometimes he just shows up. So. Take it on, Orlando. Peace or alien, just so you know. Hello, guys. I don't come in peace, by the way. This is just my own sign here. Um, but anyways, this is kind of like, I kind of agree. It's such a sort of a, a vague topic. But I think something that caught my attention was the idea of colonizing other planets. And so what I think about is, like, if we do happen to colonize Mars, like, how long would it be for humanity to split? For people on Mars to say, hey, you know what? We're better than you guys because we can afford to live on Mars. We essentially created the ecosystem on Mars. And so therefore we are Martians and no longer Earthians. And so we don't care for the Earth. You know, and if, what if it comes to the instance where, hey, maybe the quality of life kind of decreases on Earth and increases on Mars? Would we see possibly a lower class split between the Earth and then a higher class split within, between Mars? You know, it just makes me wonder. And also when you take into consideration political systems or uh, social systems and how they affect a person's personality, what would it look like? What would humanity look like on Mars? You know, how would they act? How would they seem? And is it would it be that maybe because life could be uh, uh, to survive on Mars could be tougher that perhaps we could have like a focal system for people on Mars to be maybe closer to each other? Because, you know, the harder it is to live, the more you rely on others, the more of a purpose each person seems to fulfill on Mars. So it just makes it really makes me wonder, like, how would these societies exist? What would their personalities be like versus that on Earth? 
And so that's, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, also, what I'm thinking is like, where is capitalism and commercial life taking us as a whole, as, as like a species? Like, um, what if in the future we're able to control genetics and technology to the point that we have sort of control as to how smart our children are or how beautiful they look and how they look? You know, would it be so now you can buy how, how your child's going to look in the future, how smart they're going to be? So I don't know. That's what I'm kind of interested in. I'll, I'll, go, I'll let you guys go next. OK. Uh, yes, uh, of course, capitalism. I mean, uh, I, I, it, it is funny. I, and my dog is wanted to participate. He doesn't like some of your ideas, guys. He's kind of complaining. Think that you need to practice a little bit more your philosophy. Um, but anyways, that's not the point. Uh, the point is like, uh, I, 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 he, I, I read actually, well, no, I read. It was a commercial that shows on my YouTube channel. There was one guy who's trying to take people to Mars. Like just for free, like you kind of like buy a ticket and you can go there. So we can see that there is already like some sort of commercialism um, in that regard. Um, the, the, the funny thing to me is that we don't really have anything yet on Mars. So like, try, like the money that you're gonna get, okay, you go there, but what if you get bored? What, what if they actually, you know, the planet is not circular, it's like actually plain. You cannot see everything that you wanted to see. And it's like, oh, damn, this is boring. You just spend a lot of money on it. Kind of like not that useful, I guess. But anyway, I'm taking some of the time that you said could be using to say something else. So hold your pens and just let's hear you share. Hey, uh, great discussion, guys, of course, as, as always. But um, I'll, I'll just take a quick moment to bring it back to the, the origination of the topic. And as we were discussing last week, um, OK, the colonization could begin. And that stuff is still too far ahead in the future, right? As far as the uh, topic that Orlando was talking about, about you know the genetics and how smart our, our children can be, um, we already have that technology. It's, it's CRISPR. You know, you can you can genetically modify your your children to how smart, how dumb, uh, blue eyes, black hair. You know, any, anything that you want uh, them to be now. But as of right now, it's considered unethical and immoral just because uh, based on the results uh, that we've received. But we're not that that thing becoming a moral standard is not that far off into the future. Like make your own baby. You know, like build a bear uh, kind of thing. So that, 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 that technology already exists. And so coming back to the original topic, um, what we were discussing last week was if, if we have a powerful enough artificial intelligence, right? And Marcus is the one who actually initiated the topic, Marcus Russell, uh, uh, blonde hair, blonde, long hair, uh, same as mine. But that being the main concern as of right now, what if it develops a consciousness of its own and considers itself to be a superior being to us, whether here or on Mars or any other uh, place that, that we can think of. Um, again, the colonization part of another planet is still too far off in the future. We can barely sustain life on our own moon as, uh, as it is, and that is the closest uh, gravitational a gravitational equivalent uh, star that we can think of or we can reach as of right now. So, um, see, we already have artificial intelligence that that contributes to a lot of our lives, and um, Orlando can be a better source for it. Where he mentions that there is already technology that hospitals use, where an artificial intelligence, a robot, decides who gets to get like dibs on the next organ, for example, if it's a heart, liver, stomach, brain, you know, eyes, anything, anything of sort, who would be the perfect candidate to receive uh, that organ in the first place? So we are closer to making a self-sustaining, fully conscious and a very powerful uh, artificial intelligence model where not too far off where it can predict on when, how, where, Someone's going to die, someone's going to be born, you know, weather uh, predictions and that kind of stuff. Because uh, historically speaking, we had the Aztecs and the Mayans that could perfectly predict when it's going to rain, when it's going to snow, you know, and they were considered to be super powerful um, and technologically advanced beings of their own time. And in most cultures, they were considered to be like gods and whatnot. 
you know, like you can, you can pick up the pyramids anywhere on the planet, whether it's Egypt, Maya, Hawaii, you know, the, the uh, tiki heads that are found and that kind of stuff, because we still don't have, even in the 21st technology, we still don't have the technology uh, for making those perfectly uh, aligned cuts into stone that, that stick together and make an airtight steel without any bonding agent like cement or clay or mud or anything of sort. So having, having said that, um, in, in the light of that, we will move, I will personally like to move forward with, with on where we are uh, in our current standing and how the, th this certain type of technology can easily, you know, consider itself to be superior to us, which in most ways it, it may be. And as far as the judgment goes, we already have like uh, a lot of courts in, in Europe, they use, they don't have a physical judge, right? It's a computer algorithm that decides, that decides if a person is, is guilty, if not guilty, innocent, you know, minimum time and that kind of stuff. So uh, in terms of judgment and, and having a, a moral standing, we already have that um, in, in current existence. So we need to keep that in mind when, when moving forward and considering things like Oh, that could just as easily happen. And in terms of a society, how willing or not willing are we to accept that? You know, because the, the first thing why people don't call customer service is because it's it's nowadays all automated, right? You call a one eight hundred number, and usually on the other end is just a robot trying to trying to help you out, which it learns and builds upon after every call. So that is in terms of speaking and acceptability of it, we already don't like it very much because we don't have that human connection. Even though that robot has perfectly logical and sensible answers, we just want that human uh, connection or interaction um, to deal with. Um, did he got cut out? Or is the system kind of like he talked like already for over five minutes, so that's just mute him? I, no, I uh, it's... It, it's just that I'm I'm outside uh, smoking and I don't know if if uh, you guys are okay with it, so I just cut off uh, my my camera when when I'm not speaking. So yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna continue with the queue, and the queue we have Marcus 2.0, not the blonde one, the other one, the military one. Um, he said, as an example, look at the space junk in Earth's orbit. We are already damaging the space outside of this planet. If we do not correct ourselves first, what is the point of moving planets? Uh, true. And then from that, we have uh, Lucas. So go ahead. I never know if you want me to say professor or not. Yeah, yeah just Lucas is fine. Yeah, I find, I find that there's so many directions that we're going, and everybody's going a different direction. And we're, um, I'm trying to find an underlying theme to bring everybody together. And I think that I have one, but I want to wait for a couple more people to speak because maybe something will come out of the chaos, and I don't want to necessarily direct us yet. So go on to the go ahead and go to the next person. You're going to wait until the end, and to the end it's too late. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. So then, Marcus, go ahead and take it. Is he here? I don't see the dog. Yes, we'll see the dog yeah. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Um, the whole the whole point of the the question is to is to sow the idea in your head, okay, that uh, exactly what the the other Marcus uh, that we just read, you know, if we do not solve this issue of being human and destroying ourselves at the same time before we, you know, feel the need to move and explore and expand even more to bigger and greater things, are are the is the gap that we're creating between you know our control of our self as a human or the understanding of ourselves as a human and the ability and the things that we can do is that gap the widening of it going to create more and more you know perverse action or just like worse motivations people not having true there's a lot of physical or there's a lot of metaphysical complications that can come from um that, that gap uh of because you don't understand the very things that you're uh, you're held responsible for, or et cetera. Um, like imagine having the power of a man that can, with his wealth, et cetera, create 
and organize his way to space. Like, imagine you yourself had that. Like, like what would you do with that power, you know? Um, and, what, like, how would you go about trying to make yourself understand the responsibility of said any power? But then that goes on top of just what the responsibility of being a human is. That's the question we're trying to really solve, because if we don't answer that question before we leave Earth, I fear we might not, you know, we'll probably, we'll never answer it. Like, it's bottom line, because, you know, we came from Earth and to, and to abandon it. Another question is, if we move to Mars, um, you know, it's essentially like moving away from your hometown, you know, that you grew up in. But, like, so much more than that, uh, the very place that, like, gave you life, like the source of your creation life. So what if, you know, the generations that we try to raise on Mars aren't going to be the same? The, like, they're not, they're not Earthling. They're not, they're not Earthling humans. They're going to be a, a different, like, species or whatever you want to call it, like a variant of humans, bottom line. This is something you're going to have to accept because um, they have an entirely different experience of uh, of the human experience, which is, you know, the human experience. You wake up, you walk, you see grass, you see trees, you see life, you see birds, you interact, you see a squirrel, you know, pick up an acorn, dig it into dirt. You know, you see litter on the road, you pick it up. It's, there's a huge interaction with the life on Earth, uh, this this phys this connection that you have like in your heartstring. Would that exist or would it like fade away if we moved on to elsewhere without fully understanding, you know, our place on Earth and our connection to the source of life, et cetera? That's the question um, that I like to. Uh, I, I do have to say answer. something. I, yeah. I think like, like I, I, I can see even a little bit more clearer right now what Lucas is saying. Um, I mean, we're going in a lot of direction, right? We are not still addressing the question. Are we destined or doomed to destroy this earth and all others? Um, well, I think we're analyzing a lot of what is surrounding us, but we're not kind of like using it to kind of like do a prediction, which is what it seems to be the point of this meeting. I'm not completely sure, um, but I mean, it's fine. Uh, no, yeah, I, I totally agree with you guys. I'm, I'm sorry to cut in, but I totally agree with you guys on, on that point that we are in fact going in way too many directions. So. Uh, let's focus on on this planet and right now let's not focus on the uh, artificial intelligence aspect nor the interplanetary exploration or space exploration uh, for that because I really like the point I'm not sure and I do apologize of uh, who brought it up where we already have a lot of space debris and we haven't even started properly exploring it you know uh, this morning actually last night and into this morning I've been up since yesterday watching the um blue origin uh, launch and its retrieval so them and the spacex project where the uh, thrusters actually come back into a safe zone landing and those thrusters can be reused over and over and over as many times as possible to where we limit the amount of resources that we put into it and to eliminate the amount of space debris that we leave in uh, surrounding our planet and other uh, stars that are that are near us. So I think it's it's a good uh, baseline to start where how we as humans have forgotten our moral compass and when it comes to uh, destroying or uh, protecting the environment and the resources that we um, basically not harness, but we steal off of it. That would be a proper term, uh, in my opinion, at least. Okay. Uh, yes. Um. Uh, the 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 second Marcus is Marcus two point oh. Yeah. He's he's the better version. Uh -huh. No. No. Nothing, Marcus. No. Okay. And I was trying to tease you. It doesn't seem like it worked out. Yeah, You're, too the, the... You're too mature. You're too mature for this. This one. Let me be child for a moment. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jesus, you're next, and then Israel. Okay, then I guess I'll just be a bit more upfront, I guess, with the answer of saying that humans are destined to end up exploring, exploring outwards. Oh, wait, wait, let me look at the question, right? Yeah, I say, yeah, they're gonna, I say the earth is out, it's gonna be, yeah, I mean, how it is, you know, um, in terms of like population growth, that's gonna be a, it's, that's probably gonna be one reason of which maybe another one's gonna be you know use of resources that sort of thing, and I think yeah in, in that terms we're gonna end up just having to like colonize other planets and stuff. Um, I don't really know much more to say about that. I mean, yeah. 
That's just short as that is, yeah. I, 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 I want to jump in on top of that, Jesus, because that's sure. the direction that I had in the back of my mind of one one thing that can connect everything that we're talking about is, and it's what people are thinking about right now, is uh, controlling the population in order to do away with this question. So uh, if we get the population controlled, then we quit using all the resources and we quit having all the polluting and we have all the things we lowered. So uh, this idea of population control uh, is uh, also behind the question that we're talking about. But so mm. I had the same idea. So no, just mention it, open up, and then let it like was, that. Yeah, yeah, about... Just letting Israel just take this from there, like nothing. We just ah, oh, I have the answer to all this conversation, but you know what? I'm gonna abstain. It's gonna hang in there in the back, whatever. Ah. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, a couple of things that have come to my mind uh, regarding what Professor Manzi said initially, and then uh, what uh, Orlando said. So uh, Professor Manzi had brought it up that um, are we at this point in time? Are we just living in the planet, or are we just on top of it based off of the um, technology that we're able to uh, use and that sort of thing? But I keep going that we're still. Um, bound to earth in the sense that we still everything that we need to make that technology whether it be silicone rubber even plastics everything is sourced from earth and we don't have any idea that uh, with the other planet whatever planet we decide to move on to would it have that kind of sustainable um things or resources that we need to quote unquote um stay on top of that planet you know uh, everything that we need in terms of resources is still derived from earth in one way or another there's no such um, thing yet in the sense that we, it's completely free of anything that has been uh, drawn out of Earth or anything that was made um, outside of that requirement. Uh, the first thing in technology that is used is, I believe, uh, silicones, a lot of metals, and a lot of um, things that are drawn from the Earth. Then moving on to what Orlando said in terms of capitalism, I feel like um, being human, uh, the most precious commodity that we have right now is mostly just power and influence. It's not even the amount of money somebody has or it's not even the amount of resources anybody has, but more so um, the resources and the nature of uh, knowing the right people who can get you what you need or knowing the right people at the right chain uh, of command and so on and so forth. So. Um, if we do entertain the idea of, yeah, if we do move on to a different planet, what, um, in my opinion or in my mind, the way the picture is being drawn is um, essentially the fact that uh, mostly whoever or whichever few group of people who do end up um, on the planet first, quote unquote, would be considered the governing authority there. And then everything, whether it's uh, the moral guidelines or whether it's the use of resources or whether it's even getting the permission to further populate um, the planet or grow the population and so on, everything would be dependent on those few people or those artificial intelligence uh, beings that would have been there as sort of like a nursery or a guiding point in terms of, okay, this is what's considered moral, this is immoral, and this is a crime punishable by getting you kicked off of the planet or something like that. So um, I feel like it's more going to be dystopic than utopic by any means, because um, at the end of the day, human beings are not perfect, and I don't think we will be even a thousand years from now. We could talk about a lot of philosophical things. We could talk about morals, ethics. We could talk about... Um, how we can or cannot care for other people, other beings. But at the end of the day, I feel like it would come down to the survival of the fittest. And uh, when it's time for uh, survival, I think everything goes out the window and it's just the strongest people who survive or it's just anybody who can get uh, what they need first, who gets to call the shots or who gets to kind of dictate how everybody else lives, how it is right now in our world. We just don't see it based off of the filters of racism and uh, culturalism and all the other isms, but essentially that's what it is. Uh, somebody is drawing the uh, lines in terms of what is okay and what's not okay, and every decade or so that just changes to a new uh, definition of what's considered globally uh, more uh, appropriate for everybody. So I feel like that's how um, the new colony, quote unquote, would probably expand or that's how uh, it would be governed uh, essentially in the future. 
All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, uh, now uh, it will come a part of like the audio book of this meeting. I'm gonna have to read a lot. Sorry if you don't like my voice, it's just what it is. Okay, so we have Marcus 2.0. He's saying, would you see a better system on Mars just because it is new or because it could be different than Earth? Which the original Marcus said, uh, to say we could successfully raise productive ration of humans of the same caliber on Mars as we do on Earth, I think this counts the importance of the human experience on Earth and the effect that it has on the molding of the heart of a human. We will see less love, seeing as there is less life. The thing of love to support the experience of a human on Mars. Will we be further from God in that respect, the source of life essentially, which then our alien uh, with his expertise responded to Marcus saying, there are theories out there that believe Mars was on Earth like planet before it, went through its own climate change that destroyed the environment. The whole idea will be to terraform and essentially recreate another Earth. Then original Marcus, this is getting confusing. Um, you aren't paying enough attention to the metaphysical implication of the event. Ooh, it seems like a battle there. It's a battle of interplanetary battle. Then the response of our alien of our own, he said, Marcus, Listen up, you fool, I have more experience than you. If you think about it, there is a great conflict on Earth because so many people feel as if they don't serve a purpose in society. If on Mars, people are more demanded to contribute to society, perhaps having a purpose can in turn give a closer model society. Then Marcus again, also, if we are considering life on Earth, certain species on Earth are dying. So if we're speaking about life supporting on Earth, we're more negative than positive in terms of that. And then he asked for the floor. So go ahead. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> I would buy your audiobook if you had one for sure. Um, <laughs> but basically, I feel like there's this same question that keeps being asked why should we expand if we can't fix ourselves? Um, but what's funny is that question keeps being asked, but there's never an answer for it. And I think because really there's no real answer for it. Because, you, I mean, the reality is. I think it's more possible to explore space than for everyone on Earth to get along. I think that's just something that's more its more simple. It's like for, oh, we're all on Earth going to one day just up and grow close and love each other and come to agreement. It just seems it seems like a, a, a fallacy. It just doesn't seem real. And so with that being the case, I think um, we're not built on moral progress as a society. Like if you ask different countries, they're not their focus isn't, oh, what's the what's best for everybody. They're going to give you a, a, a political market system that's based to raise the standard of living for everybody. That's basically what we're built on. And if you think about on Earth, there's only so much a market or a commercial system can grow. There's only so much of a market that can exist. There's only some, so many things that can exist. And so in expanding the space, you can essentially see a growth of that market. You can see new jobs being created. You can see different systems existing. Essentially, the progress in society can grow as a whole just because of our different exploration of it. And so with that being the case, if you think about things like World War II and why so many different things came out of it, the standard of living once again grew, uh, more people were making more money, there was more different technology that came out of it, rockets came out of it because even because of the creation of weapons, Imagine what space exploration would create. Imagine the different technology that would come from that. So I think we're looking at it in a very uh, kind of a misconstrued way of, well, why should we do that if we don't do this already? It's, you, you don't have the answer. No one has the answer to that. That doesn't mean that we should stop progress because of it. So the reality is it's just like it's going to happen because the industry has made it happen. And I think it can be a good thing because it can essentially enable people to become scientists. It can enable more people to say, hey, maybe I should put down the social media and become a rocket scientist because it's the new thing. So, you know, I think I think we're looking at it the wrong way, to be honest. Uh, sorry, Orlando, um, my dogs were fighting. I hear nothing. I was just like, nothing. I hope I didn't miss something dicey. Um, <laughs> it's fine. You were doing good. You were doing good. You're an experienced philosopher. Um, I believe you. Um, but one do uh, one thing I have to say. Um, uh, we do have somebody with the answers, and that is Professor Lucas. But he's abstaining. He's like, uh, no, I'm not gonna. I have no answers. Yeah, uh, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, 
No answer, exactly. I mean, this is philosophy. We are supposed to not have answer, but many questions, right? Yeah, I, I see, I see. Keep that, keep that spirit up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then we have Marcus uh, saying that he already gave us the question. I hope it's a good one. But yeah, you did. And then Nancy is next. Go ahead, Nancy. Uh, it took a while for you to speak again. Thanks. Again, I appreciate everybody's considerations, contributions. Um, and, and Isra, thank you for responding to, to my points earlier. I kind of want to return to that and also, in a way, respond to Orlando. Um, what I see happening is here, we're all kind of circumventing the, the, I would say, the most urgent question, which is the moral question. Um, so, so again, talking about colonizing uh, Mars or some other planet, et cetera, I mean, that is really... Uh, complicated and, and philosophically very interesting, but you know, before we depart, uh, I still think that we have to consider, you know, how we're gonna how we're gonna leave our our initial uh, you know, point of departure. So uh, again, I, I'll put it to you, to y'all, in the most straightforward way. Um, do you think living things deserve to live, and do you think the planet Earth is a living thing? And, th and these questions beget the ultimate moral question, which goes back to that anthropological question, which is again, if, if we, we came to be because of the planet Earth, and we continue to sustain our existence because of the planet Earth, in many ways we're dependent on the planet Earth. So is there not some sort of inherent obligation to, instead of you know flying the coop and just say, well, we did what we could with this planet, on to the next one. Uh, for the sake of the human race, perhaps there is some sort of ethical, uh, again, exigent when it comes to, well, perhaps we are obligated to do what we can to care for the earth, to take care of it, much like you might take care of uh, a parent who brought you into this life and maybe no longer is able to offer you resources financially, a home, because you've sapped them of it, joking, or because there's just no left. I mean, do you still feel obligated to care for your parents? They're still alive. They still love you. Uh, can you, can you, I guess, interpret that kind of love, quote unquote, from the very environment, from the conditions that allowed you to become who you are and what you are, both organically and individually? Um, I think these are real questions. Uh, you know, before we talk about colonizing another planet, we have to talk about a relationship to planets. Not just to other life forms that are perhaps conscious, but life forms in general. Um, again, it's called Mother Nature for a reason. Okay, yeah, just throwing that out there. Yeah, uh, I was gonna do a couple of jokes. I'm, I'm gonna try to avoid that, but it, it was very tempting. Remember, now I'm very holding myself out here. Um, I do like the the whole uh, point that you're bringing out, whether or not artists consider something alive. Um, because, I mean, everything that is alive seems to be dependent on Earth. So to what degree, I mean, what is it that re the definition of being alive is everything comes from it, you know? And it has its reactions. It is affected by our actions. It has consequences by not taking proper care of it. So like, I don't know exactly if it thinks to some degree, and if it does, how does it? Anyways. This is for me to later on, like that sect of my own. But okay, we have Marcus here. Um, he does have a comment, uh, not the original one, not the 2.0. Uh, where does the current human species juggling of the responsibility of human uh, lead to? What world will come from it? And money gets you that. And then with that being said, we have Jesus. Oh, sorry, Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh, kind of like a play of words right there. I just say that um, in terms of whether the Earth is a living a living thing or not, I just feel like the Mother Nature thing shouldn't... I think what, what people... I'm, I don't know. I'm, it's probably going to be like a check just to see if I'm, I'm, I'm sane or not. But I say like Mother Nature is supposed to mean, to mean like the collective itself, you know, as in all things, you know, as in like the plants, the trees and everything, not the actual planet, you know, as in like the earth itself like it doesn't matter if it gets hot or not or if there's tons of like tsunamis hurricanes that, that, that it could care less um so yeah i mean and, i mean in terms of this i do have to say in in the terms of like colonizing i'd say 
we'd be more prepared to be colonizing, I guess. Like, in terms of if we were to colonize a planet, I think it ended up being better off just for the sheer fact is that we that we just know better now than, I guess, uh, than before. I mean, before we had to go through things like the Industrial Revolution and, and that sort of things in which, you know, we had to, like, cause so much, uh, you know, I guess you would say uh, ecological, environmental damage to the Earth. But with, you know... And now, now in hindsight, we could, you know, improve in terms of like, you know, what we do in colonization. Okay, yeah, you're saying. I, I'm insane though. That, that oh, I don't need anything oh. to check that, but you are completely insane. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. Yeah. So no worries there. Um, now we have Yusha. Uh He said, "See, I see humans as the virus or a leech on planet Earth because we reap the resources, but rarely ever give." Back. Look at the oil industry, not to mention the money and our greed to always have more, more, and more. In a movie, I thought I will, I, oh, I'm assuming it was I saw a while back. Um, they mentioned that the human is the virus. To kill a virus, the host increases its core temperature. Same is happening on Earth. There you go. So, and that was his introduction. And mm. now, he wants the room to speak, so go ahead. Hey, thanks. Um, yeah, as, as, as I mentioned, um, the Earth is, I'll quickly tie in Professor Manzi's comment on it, that in, in a biological aspect, um, Earth is not in and of itself a living being. Why? Because uh, see, a living being needs some form of nourishment. It needs to have um, access to some form of, of gases uh, to be able to survive and not to mention, you know, the temperature, humidity, etc. Like, like, just like humans, plants, and animals do. So we're considered living beings, right? Um, the planet sustains life. It's it, considered like, like the foundation of a home, right? Uh, the foundation in and of itself is not considered part of the home because when you go to get insurance for it, the foundation is generally covered separately uh, away from the home insurance. So that being said, um, that would be my uh, feedback on it. Now to the topic of um, humans being the, the virus, and I'll, I'll wholeheartedly stick to it, that in, in a very twisted way, it does make sense. See, when you get sick, you usually get fever. Uh, most recent example could be the, um, the coronavirus vaccines that we got, right? A dormant COVID, uh, COVID uh, what's it called, bacteria, or I don't know what it's called. The, um, the thing was injected into you so your body could build its immune system for it, right? And most of us got fevers, chills, body aches, and that kind of stuff. The, the, the same thing is happening to Earth. And us being the only contributing factor to it is not actually 100% true. Why? Because since humans started civilizing and colonizing, the other creatures like cows, right? They, when they emit gas in terms of their uh, bodily uh, ejections, they give out methane gas, which is the most toxic thing to, to planet Earth. And with us being so focused on are uncolonizing ourselves, we completely ignore the fact that, hey, we were the contributing factor of controlling a certain type of population, right? In terms of a species coming back from extinction, you have the Galapagos uh, Island turtles. They they practically just came in a, in a snap. They came back to, to being alive, healthy, and, you know, a very generous amount of population that they have now. So, um, us blaming ourselves for it, even though I uh, contradict myself in my previous comment where I bring in the oil industry into it, we are in a very indirect way one of the contributing factors because regardless whatever we say about ourselves, the, the planet's own core temperature, just like any other star on, in our galaxy, is going to increase eventually, right? We just happen to live in a time where we can actively observe it increasing, whether it's the polar gas melting, you know, sea levels rising, a temperature rising, and that kind of stuff. So it was all inevitable, whether we do it internally or it's done to us externally in terms of the uh, sun expanding to the point where it completely 
uh, engulfed our our planet. So us trying to trying to kind of rewind time of of the damage that we've already contributed to, I think that's that's useless. And now I would uh, I would bring in that hey, you know, since this is already a dying planet, why not go and actively seek out another planet that can sustain life? See how we can learn from our mistakes and probably um, ignore the negative aspects of what we've done. Not not ignore, but kind of limit the negative aspects of that. Whether it was uh, technological advancements where almost everything was running on steam engines, we still have uh, petrol-powered cars, diesel-powered cars, um, and all of these, these major contributing factors. But the biggest thing is our own uh, consumption of food because I was attending a, a conference where the presenter said the biggest harm to planet Earth is actually food waste and overgrowth of it. And that is where I comment on greed and always wanting more. If you go to any event or ceremony, right, even a restaurant, anything that you don't consume right then and there or take home with you, um, the restaurant just throws it away. And in, in a matter of speaking, they're right to do so because they can't serve anyone the food that you've consumed because they don't know what kind of illnesses you have. And it, it just looks bad, right? So with that, why not go outwards, right? Since we already know that okay, my home is falling apart. I need to either rent out a new apartment or purchase a new home or a vehicle that my vehicle is dying. You know, I can't afford to sustain it anymore. Why not uh, go buy a new vehicle? So why do we not look at the aspect of sustaining and preserving ourselves first and coming to the secondary at a later date? As of right now, we're focusing on on trying to find a solution to a problem that has already grown out of hand. So why do we not take what we have right now and move forward with it? Why do we try to keep going back in time and trying to revert the thing that is practically impossible to, to change now? And that, I, I hope, answers uh, Professor Manzi's question, whether we are just part of the planet or we're just living on it. Yeah, no, thank you for that response. Uh, for the record, I will cook food in my kitchen and continue to eat it for 14 days. So I think I'm doing a decent job of preserving it and myself, maximizing the resources. Uh, okay. Um, no, I do appreciate that response. I, I, again, I and maybe I'm, I'm building something out of nothing here, but I do think that, because you should, the way I understand what you're saying is, the moral responsibility is towards humans. It's towards humanity. That needs to take precedent. And why wouldn't we? You know, a funny way to put it might be this. Uh, you know, whether or not you subscribe to, you know, evolution or some uh, creation story, uh, it's kind of beside the point. But at the end of the day, everybody, I think, would agree that human human beings kind of came from the earth on some level that they're they're natural they're a part of nature our human bodies are i guess subject to the laws of physical nature just like any other physical object so we are of this stuff we're of the earth um but through i guess you might say advancements uh grace evolution we've developed rationality so you might begin to argue that our rational resources are a direct part of our natural organic origin. So in a way, using our, our rational resources almost seems like part of the course. The question then becomes, do we use them to preserve the natural resources we have? Or do we use our rational resources to, I guess, preserve, again, the, the human race uh, alone, specifically? Um, but I do appreciate that response. Uh, I thought it was really... Um, comprehensive, but but again, don't don't sleep on the moral question of whether or not we owe something to the planet, or or whether or not um, I suppose humanity is the crowning creation of the planet Earth, and so whatever it does next is totally justified. Again, big questions. Um, yeah, on 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 that <laughs> note, uh, I'll just I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but. Uh, just, just earlier today, maybe like 10, 20 minutes ago before the meeting, um, I saw one of the photographers that I follow. He's a wildlife photographer, right? And 
he portrayed something so beautiful that a mother deer who was with her, uh, what's it called? Babies. I'm just going to call them babies. I forget what they're called. Um, and she was being hunted by a pack of leopards. So she chose to sacrifice herself so her future generation can, you know, move on and, you know, breed and live whatever um, and support the ecosystem, however you want to call it, right? So in terms of us um, preserving our future prior to um, preserving the planet, because that, as I mentioned, in my opinion, at least, is inevitable, right? So when we link that instinct back to Mother Nature or how we are programmed to look at it, it is completely natural and we can't really bring in the moral aspect of, of a judgment. We can't bring in a moral judgment into it. There is a moral aspect. Yeah, I want my future generation to do better than I am, right? I want them to live a better life. I don't want them to face the hardships that I did, right? So in terms of that, um, us preserving our future over our surroundings makes 100% sense when you link it back to a, a basic human instinct. A, again, it comes back to self-preservation, where we are looking at self-preservation as me, myself, and I. But in the broader spectrum of its, of its origin, uh, it goes back to me, myself, I, and the people that I, uh, sorry, that I surround myself with. So... Why do we ignore that part that, hey, I have a family, you know, I love them, I cherish them, I support them, I, I, I work like 10 hour, 12 hour jobs for them. Um, so why do we limit ourselves to that kind of mentality? I, I do have something to add, just to add an extra point more than anything, um, because I, I, I do understand where you're going through, uh, Jusha, but I, I, I think there's also this pattern that is uh, racing which is like most individuals right now are choosing choosing not to have children because they, they understand that the environment, if they continue procreating, will be unsustainable. And like, there's like, you cannot protect even, like there's not gonna be resources for everyone. So like, mm. like I, I do think that naturally speaking, even though we're not really speaking much about it, we are starting to think a little bit more about Earth as some sort of like, uh, what is gonna happen if we continue just creating more of us. Like, like I want my, my, my DNA just to continue throughout history. And some of us are actually saying, I think it's better to stop having more of me because then there's no resources for everything that's gonna be happening later on. So uh, I, I, when I think Amansi is saying don't sleep on it is because to some degree it's already happening uh, and it's happening kind of like naturally sort of speak um, because we can see that like even though we want to protect our our loved ones like there's going to be a point that you cannot even protect them no matter what you do because you're just gonna die um but i mean it's just another point of view uh that's all we do right now um okay we have different cues uh mm -hmm. yeah i like i love what you said Bernardo. i think that's a compelling point and i really like what you know that response was from you should I guess I'll put it like this, you know, it sounds like Yusha is describing a moral instinct when he talks about almost the, you know, irrational animals self-sacrificing for the sake of the future generation. Uh, that's a really interesting idea in and of itself. That might be a philosophy club topic. Is there such a thing as moral instinct? Which is to say not the instinct of, you know, self-preservation. Or I like how Yusha said, it, you know, expanding the scope of that. But, but more like, you know, you know, setting oneself down for the sake of others without any sort of actual deliberation. Again, it's instinctive. It's done automatically. Um, but again, having said all that, I, I do want to kind of build on what Fernando said here, which is this idea of, I mean, we need, we need people to die. The earth needs organisms to die to continue to sustain its own lifespan, if you want to think of it in that kind of way. I'm sorry, it's read that I offend you. <laughs> no, but um, but I, but I mean, I bring it up for the following reason. Uh, and again, Professor Ulrich, Luke brought this up earlier um, about population uh, control. Uh, what he didn't say is that maybe the planet Earth has a built-in population control mechanism that is natural, mm -hmm. like and COVID. Just, what? Huh? Huh? It's it's just theories. It's just theories. It's not confirmed. No. 
Well, you know, but also things like, you know, volcanoes and stuff like that. Now, again, if you ask a student of science or a scientist who's very familiar with, with, with this kind of thing, with geophysics and plate tectonics and stuff like that, they'll tell you, no, it's all, it's all more or less just a result of, of these geophysical mechanisms. Now, granted, we may be, you know, the catalyst for some of these, but it's just, it's, it's happening bereft of any sort of judgment morally or justice-wise. Having said all that, we as humans are able to interpret natural events in terms of right and wrong, moral, immoral, just, unjust. And, you know, all this talk that I heard today about colonizing planets and stuff like that, uh, you know, preserving the human race um, as, and, you know, and maybe even perfecting it further towards some sort of, I guess, Martian utopia is what Orlando was getting at. Uh, we also have to keep in mind that um, the human race would have a past, you know? Uh, the way that we treat what it is that, have a, that has allowed us to flourish to begin with, I think would speak volumes about humanity's ability to sustain itself and flourish in the future in any environment. And again, this came up with, well, you know, we set the resources of the earth. Why wouldn't we do it on any other planet? I think that's a great point because that gets back to the moral issue of how do you treat the source? Do you bite the hand that feeds? The planet earth has fed all humans, regardless of origin and race and creed and religion. And so is the rational next step to abandon it for our continued flourishment or our continued I, I guess bad habits of again sapping the earth of its resources and hey Menzi, can I respond to you real quick? I wanted to add something. Can I, can I just respond? He mentioned my name. I, I have a, a rebuttal <laughs> system. There. I thought uh, you liked <laughs> what I was gonna say is like, okay, what if we're just applying a very humanistic, moralistic way to nature when nature doesn't have that in it, you know? When you really think about it, I think it's kind of an egotistical for us to say we're going to destroy the earth. In reality, the earth is going to destroy us. I mean, it's just that simple. If you really think about the timeline of the earth, and at one point it was literally a lava planet. I would think that's closer to the earth being destroyed than it's ever been now or ever will be. So what I'm saying is we're not going to destroy it. Eventually, a, a planet that supports, you know, certain... Uh, chemical materials, it's going to stabilize again. The ecosystem will restabilize while we will be long gone. So I think this whole idea of are we going to destroy the earth, I think it's a little bit a little bit silly, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the feedback. Yeah. <laughs> I, I must okay, say so this. Like... Just so we're clear. Okay, so we have plenty of philosophy club student officers who feel like morality is silly. Okay. Um, Moving forward, we, we learned that from someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, again, again, these are excellent points. Don't get me wrong. I, I certainly respect the point. Uh, I just, I, you know, for the sake of argument, I would suggest that we can't keep blaming the ecosystem. We, you know, at a certain point, can't you just say, well, rationally speaking, we've risen to the point where we should be able to develop technology that could allow us to preserve not just ourselves, but our, our station, our, our location, as opposed to saying, no, we have to abandon the location and, and then just that's gonna be our history until we're extinct. We just keep bouncing from new location, to new location, to new location. That sounds, uh, I don't know, that sounds oppressive. Well, the thing is, you're, you're absolutely right. I think I, one thing I do agree with you guys yeah, is to say... That's the meaning? We have a cue. Wait, hold up, hold up. We have no, a no, cue, no, 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 no. I don't want to be that guy. I feel like, but I have I feel to like we have guy. to clear it up, though. I feel like I have to clear it up. <laughs> I feel like... I think we're assuming that we're gonna we're just going to just abandon the planet. I mean, I think with science and discovery of technology comes, you know, progress in that sense. Like maybe, like I said in the text, maybe we'll discover a way to save the planet from space exploration. Maybe there's different materials on asteroids or some space rock that we find to say, hey, this will actually help us in this manner. So I, I don't know. You know, I just don't think it's as counterintuitive as we think. Um, and once again, with more resources, with more um, different markets to discover, I think there's different ways we can help the Earth. And also, in general, I just um, the boy side again. All right, fine. You you mixed me up. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. All I'm thinking is, well, what is the morality of me moderating this conversation if I just keep ignoring the queue? And now they're gonna see this guy. We need to get him out. Get him out. 
me. It's okay. I just, I, I, you know, I can just give it. I don't, my, I don't care about that part. But yeah, we have a queue, and I think it keeps just building up. And we do have 16 minutes over, so I think we have to address the queue a little bit. Since some of them still want to speak, if they still remember the, what they were supposed to say, maybe they completely forgot. Sometimes that happens. Uh, but well, I mean, uh, since you were already talking, uh, please allow me to read your text, Orlando. Since yours is next, I mean, no, no just yes? just, I, okay. just skip my text. Just skip my text. It's fine. Okay. So uh, it says, "What if technology discovered from planetary travel helps no, save the salvation my, of just, Earth?" Just skip oh, mine, Fernando. To, to read it again, okay. Just skip so it. What skip. if technology? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, my, my English sometimes fail me. Uh, okay, so is Marcus 2.0 here? I think so. So I, you, the, the room is yours. Okay, so we're talking about whether humans are destroying Earth or Earth is destroying humans. I think it's a two-way street there. We're both destroying each other. One is more natural and the other is not as organic as some may think. But the problem is, is that we're trying to come up with a solution, like say go to Mars or whatever. How, how many, how, how, how long have we been sending rovers to Mars just to drive around Mars? We haven't even tried to the monkey. take, take a, a, a little portion of it and try to grow things, see if the soil is worth even being able to do things with it. We have robots that can go there and build things. We have robot, just like robots can build things here. We haven't even tried that in 25 years or whatever we've been going there. We have, we're so far behind the, the curve of trying to move a planet that we're not considering that we still have to live here. We have to control what's here. And that's why I made that comment about space junk. Are we going to move our society that is creating a problem on Earth to another planet and creating the same problem? That's why we have that conversation. We have to correct, try to correct the portion here before we can just move one trouble to another planet. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Uh, this is what I think. I, I believe you're right, but the point is whether humanity would actually agree to do so. Like, would humanity care of fixing this thing first before moving if you had the possibility of actually moving? Um, I mean, I have seen sometimes people who they just they have a very nasty thing there, and you know what? It's just easy. I would do it tomorrow, and they throw a little bit more, you know, because well, why not? They keep adding to the trash. Whenever you have a pile, like big pile of clothes that is just undone, it's like oh, I'm too tired. F it, Sha! another cloth to the to the basket. Sha! So I think it could happen that way. Imagine that, but planetary scale. Uh, so more the question is, I think what Marcy was addressing, will, uh, people actually will have that moral compass of let's do what is right before we actually move. Do you think that we're going to be able to contain ourselves if we have the technology to actually move and just keep exploring there? Since uh, a little bit, not as what human has been doing so far. Um, that's for sure. Well, okay, so now we have Isra's text. She said, I believe Earth is a living thing because it behaves that way, which then Orlando said, often we discover that precious metals and minerals from asteroids can help us use resources that in place help us avoid the exploitation of Earth resources. And then Israel won the floor, and then Orlando once again. Okay, I'll just focus on the resources first. Okay, so address a couple of points that have just come up. Um, I think the bottom line from what I can tell uh, from everybody's um, input on this would be that uh, it's at the bottom line would be that uh, our the humans seem to be or the human species seem to be the only um, being that has the um, moral integrity as well as the intellectual ability to be able to do something about uh, whatever issues that we are causing or whatever issues that are uh, that we are seeing in society right now whether it's right now or in the future i feel like uh, um, what 
Fernando pointed out is correct that unless and until you have no fresh laundry to wear, most people wouldn't go through their laundry. They wouldn't want to keep up uh, or make a system that is sustainable in the sense that they don't run out of clothes at all. They would rather run out of clothes than be forced to do their laundry. And then it's a cycle again where, okay, they'll keep using the fresh pile of clothes until uh, they've got nothing to wear and then they'll do the laundry. So I feel like more human uh, human beings are displaced um, to feel more comfortable and not be jolted into action until there is an, um, uh, until it's like too late. And because we've recovered so successfully before, it's kind of ingrained in our uh, habits that, oh, um, I, I've made it before, so I'll make it again. It's okay. I'll, I'll push it till the end, and, and that's when I'll do something about it. Um, apart from that, uh, something else that Fernando said, I wanted to respond to that in terms of there are some people, as he mentioned, who said that they're not going to want to have children because they don't want to contribute to the population or they want to take one for the team, I guess, quote unquote, and say that there's enough of us already. So um, I don't want to contribute more to that. Um, in that regard, I feel like um, it could it could be a two way uh, thing in the sense that there might be one group of people who are like, okay, if I don't have kids and I don't teach them better, who will teach somebody else to be better and so on and so forth? How will we fix the problem right now? And then there's the other mindset that says that, okay, let's fix what we have right now. Let's focus on the young people right now so that from the ground up, we can um, kind of instill this mentality in them that, okay, we have to be responsible for our own actions and we have to take care of what we're doing right now. And I feel like the second approach that we have been experiencing already with the Gen Zs and all the other generations uh, who are younger than us in the sense that um, in schools and in high schools, middle schools, and even as young as like kindergarten, there is a lot of focus on sustainable efforts in terms of, okay, we should recycle, we should do this, we should do that. But um, that kind of a mental training, I feel like it's taking away the um, – ability for the young folks to think about what's beyond that sustainability or what's beyond, uh, okay, we understand the why in terms of why we're being more sustainable, why we're trying to recycle more, but then um, what's causing the actual problem? We're not helping them see at the laws that, okay, so long as those laws that are dysfunctional are still in place, any efforts with, uh, that we do, even on a global scale, are kind of effortless. Um, or they're not as effective as they can be if the government or the laws or people uh, in authority kind of get on board with that as well. And because that kind of a um, communication hasn't happened between the young people and why we're asking them to be more uh, green or kind of be more careful about what they're wasting and so on and so forth, I feel like psychologically it's going to put them into a very bad position where they're going to be more cynical. They're going to be more... Um, uprooted in terms of, hey, what's the point? If, uh, if my efforts aren't doing anything, why should I do anything in the first place? So in that case, I feel like we need to look at the whole thing holistically as well. Even when we're discussing uh, interplanetary uh, travel or we're trying to think of colonizing new areas in terms of, okay, we, this is what we learned from our past. What, what can we implement that was good from our past? And what can we avoid that was bad from our past into the future? So I feel like that would be more close to what um, Orlando has been trying to set up in terms of being the positive person here and not be as cynical as the rest of us. And uh, I like the comment that Professor Manzi made that everybody has to die at some point in the sense that they, they have to because the planet won't be able to sustain that much life. But I guess we steer into the uh, area of uh, would, that be, would that mean that we have to stop making progress in terms of prolonging life? and stop treating diseases that kill us or stop, um, you know, the progress that we're trying to make to long, uh, to make everybody's life uh, longer. So um, I guess that's, that's what I had to say. Yeah, I do want to make a comment regarding the last thing you said. Um, I'm not sure if this is something that trans, I don't, I'm not completely sure if English has it, but the Spanish has it. They said like, uh, the, uh, it's something like from earth to dust and uh, it's, I don't know, something like everything comes to dust. It's, you know, like from earth, you do poo -poo -poo and you do the whole circle. And my hand has been lowered. Thank you. I mean, my hands were actually over here, but I appreciate the gesture. Um, so, like, I, I do believe that if we come from earth and when we die, we go back to earth. I mean, to some degree, 
for feeding earth. Oh, da da I mean, I'm just teasing right now, but I do believe that we are one with Earth. So, um, uh, unless we go to Mars, then we are no longer. Actually, the planet will get shrink and shrink and shrink, or not. It stays the same. I'm just teasing well, you guys. We'd be one point. with Mars in that case, then. Mm -hmm, we'd be yeah. one with Mars in that case, then. Whichever yeah. planet we go to, we'd be one with that. We just in, yeah. That term. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the point. Now. Um, Orlando, I know you, you you like to speak because you know you you love your you to hear your own voice. Um, do you still want the floor? Um, I'll just say something real short, just to reiterate something. Um, I don't think we can destroy the Earth. I think that's a silly thing to say, because even if we somehow make the worst case scenario, greenhouse gases, their ecosystem can still stabilize. So therefore, we didn't destroy the Earth. Earth would only destroy us. Why not to say that we not to say not to say that we should be careless. Not I'm not saying we should be careless. I'm saying that the Earth would still survive while we would go extinct. Well, what, what if somebody is listening to you right now and said Chime and Deceptive, and they That'd create be. like a dead star, like the Star Wars, yeah, and then poof, That'd like awesome. a laser, like a choof, and that's all. Boom, no more Earth. That's That'd it. Be amazing. And that is that. I mean, entering <laughs> maybe not right now. Of course, not right now. It would take the resource, the resource. Sounds impossible, but yeah. Right now. I mean, there are nuclear bombs, right? We have enough, like, hydrogen bombs to, like, <laughs> really do some damage to Orlando's point. I mean, well, yeah. that, that instance, what would happen is most likely all nuclear, life fallout, nuclear fallout would engulf the Earth then, and then we'd see, like, something like a nuclear winter. Once again, that's also something our, our, our Earth also went through a, a winter, uh, what is it? It, an, it went through an ice age, and once again, we stabilized. So, yeah. it so also what if dinosaurs actually threw nuclear bombs, and that's why, like, ice age? Uh, hey, I'm just throwing bombs there. I don't know exactly. It's just thoughts. Um, but okay, is 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 that what you're coming, Orlando, or can we move on to you? Oh, that that's it. That's the only thing I wanted to clear up. Okay. Thank you. I uh, mind me my my silliness from time to time, but I do have to keep this a little bit uh, spicy since it's almost two hours. Come on, guys, we can break the record. We have gone from seven hours. We can do that. So, anyways, uh, Xiao, uh, she's texting. She said, "I think the Earth is a living thing because there is a certain give and take, a codependence between the Earth, the Earth and its habitants, where both parties depend on each other to maintain conditions." conducive to the mutual growth deterioration. Good stuff right there. And I do think they're going to have the floor later, so I'm not going to make more comment in that regard, but we do have Mansi. So go ahead, Mansi. Or not. Or maybe he's still trying to eat the 14 days meal. Oh, you're there. Hi. You just, it's, there's something there. Yeah. So but one question, just for curiosity like do you need to remove your glasses when eating can, i do i do, I'm do. Eating a messy meal right now uh, is, is it like a soup so it gets like tainted so you cannot see no so yes. he doesn't confuse it the, from the 14 day old to the 10 day old meal, so <laughs> he doesn't confuse it that's good. <laughs> okay yeah just just wondering just wondering. i was eating chowder if you must know <laughs> okay um so yeah uh Listen, I, I don't want to get off track here. I like, uh, I really like the trajectory that these, um, the comments, the chats are on here. Um, I'll, I'll just say this uh, again. I, I appreciate the, the various, I guess, aspects being highlighted of our relationship to the planet Earth and our relationship to the future, as as a, as a species, as a race. Um, I just one last thing to keep in mind, uh, and then I want to get through the queue and end this meeting once and for all. Um, I uh, <laughs> joking. Great meeting. Let's let's go twelve hours. Twelve hours soon. You have the time, Nancy. You have the time. You have to make up for last week. So we're just helping you. I I, I guess I do want to say what I was trying to get across was um, and again I'll put it in the context of, of recent points. So this idea of can we destroy the earth? Um, what if we you know hydrogen bombs, all that stuff? Uh, the question becomes when we say destroy the earth, the earth, do we mean ourselves as well? Because when we say destroy the earth, we mean all the blades of grass. We mean all the bunny rabbits. We mean all of the bald eagles. 
We mean every tree, everything. But we don't mean humans? That seems a little weird. Don't you think? We are earthlings, are we not? So when we talk about whether or not we have the actual technological capacity to destroy the earth, I think most people assume that also means ourselves. But based upon this conversation, I don't think that's what people mean. I think people are saying, yeah, I mean, can we or can we not destroy the earth? Can we sap the earth of its resources and leave? Yeah, sure, whatever. It's not us. Maybe we came from there, but it's not us. Maybe I came from this family, but I'm not my mom. I'm not my dad. I'm something else. You know what I mean? It's a really interesting way to look at uh, our relationship to everything that gave us life and gave us purpose and gave us the very rational capacity to have these conversations. So yeah. I just I'm, think, it's, it's, you know, I don't, I don't know if the planet Earth is the same thing as like, I don't know, the first car you bought for $700 as a teenager. You used it and then you left it. And yeah, it was a piece of you, but you don't need it anymore. Time for the next good thing. I don't know if our relationship to the earth is exactly like that. Yeah, and I think you're, you're touching upon a, a point that Marcus was mentioning. Like, part of why we're human is because of earth. So when, if earth doesn't exist, like the, the nature of human changes because we, we are experiences, our senses. So we stop seeing like, the colors that we see in there, like the smells, like the the the, the touch, like even like the sometimes those sensations are also affected by gravity. So you were exactly. somewhere else that things changes. Like I remember, um, um, I tend to forget his name. It was a it's every everyone quote this philosopher. I just forget how his name right now. I tend to have that. I'm sorry, uh, but I think that he was very articulate writing. And then he like he was being less able to write, so he changed to to the type machine. And like he even admitted that when I, when he was typing, his thoughts were more mechanical, and he was less able to properly um, verbalize what he was in his mind. So he changed his writing just by changing how he was writing it. So if you're changing how you're sensing, how you smell, and everything, it changes the in what it makes us human. I mean, we're going to have a different version of human, of course, but it won't be what we have in this planet. Um, it will be something different. That would be a great topic for next week. What makes us human? Yeah, it could be. Or not. Maybe somebody comes like, hey, I want to talk about Pokemon and Digimon. What is better? And boom, that's it. We win, <laughs> and we talk about yeah, Pokemon and Digimon. That sounds like the winning topic, dude. Pokemon <laughs> Digimon. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. telling you, that's, that, <laughs> that's exactly how it happened last week. I cannot see it being a different way. Um, but okay, uh, I, I do think that uh, it is time for Shao to have our moment to shine. So go ahead. Um, okay, hi. Um, I don't know if you, you guys can hear me. Uh, this is my uh, debut uh, in the philosophy club, so like, it's a lot of been going on, and I really uh, enjoy the conversations as well as uh, others' input here. Um, and well, indeed, there's a lot of things I want to say, and the others' uh, input keep adding up uh, to it. So I want to uh, first of all, I want to really respond to Professor Nancy. Um, like about the relationship between like uh, earth and humans and uh, like what is the like all those implications about it um, so like I do think that it's like two but one and one but two I don't know if that makes sense to you like there's a uh, there's a codependence uh, between us uh, that like one affects another but it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, um, like, like for now, okay, like for now, uh, one have to assist, um, like, um, one party's assistant is dependent on the other. But it doesn't have to be the case if, like, for example, we move to Mars or something. Uh, but, like, for now, we only have, like, one planet to, like, um, um, maintain, protect. So, um, I would say that like we have to think really long and hard about how to carry on living 
in this if we move to another planet. Um, I, I don't remember who's saying this, but um, yeah, they said that if we don't fix the problem now, uh, we move to another planet and that would be like the same. So the dynamics is always the same. Um, I already mentioned in one of my comments, um, uh, this is like a toxic relationship wh where one partners are like um, ruin the other and then find the next target. Like as if like the earth is disposable. It's just like the whole ecosystem. Please don't be, don't think that is disposable. Um, all right. Um, so uh, speaking of that, um, and also Ferdinando's was talking about um, like many people are not uh, choosing to have children right now. And Ezra has a really good input about it. I would say that like, uh, how about like we choose to uh, fix the problem first? Because like if we, whether we, the, the population is increasing or not, Oh, doesn't have as much of an effect on the um, the well-being of Earth as our actions. Uh, I don't know if you get my uh, idea though, but like what will what will what we are doing as the whole species is more important than like how many of us are there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. Yeah, it does like, make sense. It, yeah, uh, it does make sense yeah. to what you're saying in terms of um, whether or not we, we choose to grow or not. It's just a matter of uh, the planet being able to sustain uh, whoever yeah. is here right now. Yes, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah, so like, um, it's like there's a, a limited resources on Earth. So like uh, if we can use it like um, more sustainably, more like um, justly, uh, yeah. So that would be like it. That would, the deer can maintain and like sustain more people than like we can, um, we can imagine. Like for example, um, like if everybody goes to like have a vegetarian diets or something, uh, that would be uh, like it could feed the earth could feed like more people than what that it is currently doing, since so it takes up more like uh, land and resources to like feed the animals and then uh, we use the animal to feed us. That's just like the two, like the double process. So it, that, that, that's just an example I'm thinking of. Like instead of just like uh, not having kids, we choose to like um, to think of our development as a more sustainable way, like to improve our relationship with uh, the earth like before thinking of like getting rid of it, like this is, this cannot be fixed and like we give up on it and then we find somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, cool stuff. Um, is, is that it? I think so. Like I forget some of my points actually, so. It happens whenever Orlando wants to just, you know, do oh. a dictatorship in the conversation. Well, I'll, I'll just respond quickly. I, lo I love those points. Um, it makes me think about the political ram ramifications of that kind of thing because, I, I mean, okay, instead of sustaining, you know, metaphorically uh, or actually allegorically, instead of sustaining the earth, let's talk about how we're sustaining humans right now. And, you know, there are limited resources when it comes to, you might say, the finer resources. So the vegetables that are, the most nutritious, you know, organic versus not shopping organic, that kind of thing. It seems like when it comes to maintaining just our particular organism, there's already a class structure, an economic, at least in America, an economic hierarchy in place where it's like, you can have access to the best possible produce, but you have to pay $8 a pound for spinach. You know what I mean? So I, I wonder how, now if, if you look at that, know given the grand scope of, of what we've been talking about you know to your points um and the resources that are available you know assuming we can preserve most of them uh i mean i wonder i wonder if we can actually integrate that idea with 
the booming population without, I, I, I guess, enforcing certain population control rules. Because again, it's like, if, if you happen to believe, for example, that, uh, I, I don't know, every, if you're pro-life, we'll just say, for example, again, just for the sake of argument, um, and yet you also are of the opinion that we ought to do what we can to preserve the earth for the sake of future generations. How can those two points reconcile? Um, is it possible, or, you know, I guess back to Orlando's point, is something like, you know, striking out into outer space for new resources going to become a necessity to be able to maintain even in a very bare subsistence, subsistence existence level uh, the amount of people we have? Um, at that point, it almost becomes more rational to seek resources elsewhere, or does it become more rational to seek the growth of the human population? That's why, again, I, I keep pulling back to this moral question. I think that's what it is. What matters more, Earth for the sake of humans or humans in and of themselves? Um, I kept trying to push this idea, and I, I like what you brought up too, because I kept trying to push this idea of, well, maybe humans are obligated to the earth. Okay, people are laughing at me. It means, it means I'm talking too much. I'll stop. Yeah, yeah. No, but, uh, no, no. It's just that I, you're just too funny. Right. Like what you said is just, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> no, you're making like, good points. You're making good points, man. So I'm not going to destroy uh, your, your, you know, your self-esteem that much today. That much. I have to I do some, I some damage to today. You just left us out of like unattended last week and then you come you have the audacity you have the audacity to come and say that we were saying that we're not going to make it when we all make it <laughs> you know it's <laughs> ridiculous it's just ridiculous at this point um but okay uh i do have to continue the queue and then because this is the thing you, you bring all the governmental affairs and what and magnets we still have not decided on the topic for next week can you believe it and we have like two hours I mean, I know all of you already are just for the love of philosophy. I know you all love this matter so much that we can just continue for hours and hours dissecting why the world should be sustained or not. But I mean, Nancy is still eating and he's going to take another 14 days to just finish that meal. <sighs> Poor mother. That's all I'm going to say. Poor mother. Yeah, you, you have some time without visiting her. You, you haven't had your hair cut. You need to visit her a little bit more. <laughs> well, anyways, I'm going to continue with the queue. If you don't mind, then Jusha, he was talking to me. He said, like, like yesterday, this is already like too old, but I'm going to read it. So he said, agreed. I wasn't talking that aspect into light. That was my introduction. Whenever I was saying, hello, guys, thank you so much for coming. Jusha is responding to that. And then he's saying, not only COVID, more humans are being born naturally sterile. I have many in my own family. Ooh, dicey. I'm so sorry, uh, or not. It depends on which side you are from your family, but I'm so sorry. Okay, so then we have Orlando. He said, how long have we been in space? Uh, not sure. Uh, he said, will we really correct the problems here, though? Uh, I think we addressed that, I think. Then you just said, well said, Marcus 2.0. And then Marcos Original, he said, I'm heading out. Ah, so he's heading out. He was weak. He left us. He should have been staying here. He was his topic. And then Marcos took by now. Thank you, Yusha. Uh, <laughs> then Yusha, uh, he also mentioned me. And he said, I propose to skip Orlando and Mansi and Isra. I, I will make that like a mandate for every meeting. So every time that you guys want to speak, I just skip it, you know? I, I, guess, I, I guess I can just get... And, pro and enough votes just in this meeting to make that happen. I think I can make it happen. Um, then, yeah, and then uh, we skip you, and then it's the whole cycle. Yeah, you we skip you. It's yeah, it is, it is, yeah, you know. I mean, we do what we can with what we have. It's okay. I will take it as the, the, the circle of life. I skip you, you skip me, and so on. But then we have Xiao responding to Marcus 2.0. Uh, she said, or to could, oh, it, that could be a toxic relationship when one partner ruins the other and find their next target. Humans have been good in that IMO. I'm not completely sure what IMO means, but I don't necessarily think it's just subjected to humans. 
But in my opinion. Like, uh, in my opinion, yeah. In my opinion. Oh, I'm all. I am all. So that's how he's it happened. He's too old for this. He, he's too old for this. Just yeah, I, I just, just oh, keep it. Just right? keep it regular um, English. English. <laughs> yeah, just uh, me, I, you know, just keep to the verbs. That that acronym is to, just for young people. Okay, young no, generation. No. So nice. Like, um, yeah. So then we have you said responding to Shao. He said, I agree. Hence my opening comment about humans being the virus. Earth being the host. Then Marcus 2.0, uh, he lasted a little bit more than the original, which made him 2.0, but he had to go, sadly. Then Orlando, during the great extinction period, about 90% of all water organisms died and 70% of all animals died. Earth is still here, lol. Uh, yeah, uh, lol. Yeah, whatever. Uh, basically, everybody died, but lol. Yes, that, that's what we have. In, in, in our officer ranks, you see? Just people with this complete disregard of uh, life in itself. And then we have this, right? It says uh, that probably the human rationale of thinking I'm unique, unique enough to give the right to live as long as I need to fulfill my purpose, is a response to Professor Mancy about I'm not my dad or my mom. And scene. That was volume two of my audiobook for today. Just go, you know, Apple Store, whatever. You're going to see it. all that. $10, easy peasy. You have to hear it by my accent. Two extra dollars, you want with um, Samuel Jackson. But he's very more like the M word. And he will understand IMO. So there's that thing. But he's older than I. So he's just that clever. Okay. So with that being said, uh, this has been basically everything. Congratulations. It has been a two-hour meeting. You didn't know it was a special one, right? That's right. It was a special two-hour meeting. Um, so this is your moment. If you have a topic in mind, please put it in the chat. I just said it. I'm going to just combine them, choo -choo 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 -choo, give them a number. Uh, we vote on it. And then next week, if you want, if not, we understand. Maybe aired by then, it's just like, I'm kill, killing you all, ta, 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 and we're all dead. But as far as we have living and breath, we can meet next week. So if you have a topic in mind, please feel free. Let's see. Do, do, do. What makes us human could be a good one. Okay, so yes, that's already one that Nancy mentioned it. Now uh, we have that as one. Do, do, do. And Mansi, continue with that. What makes human human? Like you have to make the accentuation, you know? You have to actually scream. Otherwise, the question is not like properly. Yeah, I feel like we have to narrow it down just a little bit or just kind of define the scope of um, what aspect are we talking about in terms of what makes us human? Because we were looking at the uh, space frontier kind of a deal right now in terms of, okay, how would human beings um, exist? In a on another planet, had we had the luxury or the opportunity for that, so uh, I think it's if we narrow the scope more, it might be a more interesting conversation instead of just like throwing it out there saying that oh uh, what what does it mean to be a human because everybody will have a different definition for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, well, that's the thing. Uh, normally, we we try to we try. To kind of like give a definition in, in this type of conversation of what human kind what of about like. this? Mm -hmm. what, what about it like this what makes us more human our connection to nature or our connection to technology i like that i like that that makes us more human <laughs> i mean we still have the 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 question ways to be human because we have i believe we have covered it in the past like a uh, past few meetings not the recent ones but i i do recall that we did go over that question like at some point and i think marcus was there too so he might like uh, if he joins us next time he might bring up the same points that he did the last time so i feel like yeah. this is a brand newer question so if we went uh, with it in that direction i feel like it would be a better conversation yeah, I, I'm going to do a spoiler alert, though, knowing Marcus well enough. Uh, he will state, and I'm going to have this clip recorded and ready to roll for next meeting, that uh, we are different than animals and trees, you know, and he will go in that regard. Uh, he will use that argument for sure. 
But okay, that is one. I can always just go also with the topics that we have selected previous weeks. We have some that we can recycle, pun intended. Um, but in why do you think on different topics, of course. Let's see. Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. There you go. So you. It's me. Okay. Copy. Paste. Good stuff. Okay, so we have five since uh, uh, evidently you are all full of ideas. We have five. I'm going to put them there in the chat. Ciao. Can you see them? Yes, no. So, okay. Yep. So, uh, number yeah, one, yeah. what makes us more human? Nature of technology. Number two, do you need love to be happy? Three, is it possible for two diametrical opposite morally philosophies to coexist? Then we have four, what makes for a stable democracy? And five, art, how it allows us to come together, how it pulls us apart. Define diametrical. Um, like, like, I don't know how to explain it. I know what it is. Um, mm. but, but, but Israel, you have to choose one. It cannot be. I both. got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, diametrical. So, um, so yeah, basically, can you have two moral philosophies that are incommensurate yet still? operational under the same uh, governmental society. So for example, um, in America, could you have somebody who has one moral philosophy that they live with and they teach their family and, and what have you, and you have somebody else with not just a different moral philosophy, but an opposite moral philosophy. Can they coexist under the same society if the government is correct? So that's that. Marxism and sto Stoicism. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's more complicated than that. Uh, okay, so we have number three, but I still need from Israel either a one or a three. That could make all the difference. Uh, now the tiebreaker. One and three. <laughs> yeah. I, like I need you to do one or three, not one or three. Like it has to be one, or it has to be three. Well, three simply because I I feel like that's gonna be more challenging. Damn. I would like to be entertained. Okay, so entertain. Oh. Uh, Are you entertained? Saying... Are you entertained? Wow. Uh... Uh, I'm <laughs> okay, just saying. Uh... One, two, one, two, three. Three, four. Oh my God. So, um, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have all of you voted already? <gasps> nah, nah. So it, it means that uh, am I the tiebreaker? It cannot be. I think. Mm, yeah, you're the tiebreaker. It's not me anymore. It's you. Wait, but I mean, I, I'm either tired or I break it. That's the thing. But, or. Jean Claude is here and I don't see him selecting a topic. I can always flip a coin. No, 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 wait, uh, wait, wait. Big one, Fernando, please. But then I tie it, you see? Ah, okay, this is the thing. I'm, I'm not going to complicate matters that much, okay? I can no, make know, it so more difficult. Okay. I can make it more difficult, but I can. Jean Claude ah. flipped a coin. He said it, it landed heads, which means one. So I guess we're doing one. No, I haven't flipped it. Also, we, also, we practically did uh, number three last time. Um, since Sister wasn't here, and she can always go back and watch the recording. So it is one by default. I'm sorry, guys. Just like that? Wow. Uh, yeah, OK. Sir, I claimed the victory. Hang on a second. Sorry, Yusha. It's, 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 not, a, uh, it's not a monarchy. Um, if we want to revisit the topic and we vote on that, then we do that topic. Uh, having said that, 
you didn't get my insight on last week's topic. It might be a whole other topic. Mm. Well, um, well, you chose to step away. You chose to step away. I wish. No, man, they very yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm, okay, 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 okay. I'm just, I can't decide. I'm gonna leave it to luck. It. I'm gonna leave it to luck. If it is heads, it's one. If it is tails, it's three. Okay, then. And we click foot. Oh. <laughs> it's tails, sorry. So it will be three. Um, Wait, is it three? Oh. I voted one. Is it three? What? You voted one, yes. But one is the what makes us human, like more human, like nature or technology. That's one. Oh yeah, Three. no, don't get. I voted for one, but I didn't disagree. I, I disagree with the imposition. But it has to be one. I want it to be one. I know, but it's it's my vote. My my vote is the one who decides whether it is one or three. All right, okay, guys. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'll no, see no, you. I'll see you next month. <laughs> Let's do this because I uh, I said one or three, so I'm open to both. So uh, either way, whichever one it is, I'm gonna be there just just for the purpose of entertainment. I see. Are you not entertained? I it's keep quoting the movie, no, but was... nobody's getting the the reference. You're all too young. You're all too. Well, young. I, I, do I look like gladiator, <laughs> gladiator to you? Gladiator. Came out like in the 2000s, bro. What are you? <laughs> Yeah. You're all too young. young. It's not that old. Not yeah, you're too young. But anyways, mm. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised Man said knows it because he only see movies that are black and white. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's Persona. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we, so we never cool. did watch Persona, Manzi. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry too. That movie <laughs> so gladiator that uh, it came out when I was in college and I had a roommate that would play it nonstop. Mm. It's always on whenever I got back to yeah, our room. It, it was your roommate's fault, right? It was not you. <laughs> you had the option not to see it, and yet you watch it every single every single time. Did you bring popcorn? Maybe you bring some Coca Cola. <laughs> 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 uh, anyways, no, um, I I ended up fighting him, and we don't speak. No, I'm joking. That was my brother. All right, yeah. folks, that'll do it. But but you're you're single you, you don't have a brother like like he kept <laughs> playing money i had to take care of him <laughs> okay no point is um it has to be three i guess because the coin side three i'm sorry orlando you have to still come um i'll, I'll see mm. you guys next month um yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys one of these days. Um, I mean, I mean, we can we can tie them together if you want to, because partly of why we couldn't get along is because we're humans, or maybe we can get along because we're human. We can touch it. Everything is possible. Diametrical. Diametrical. <laughs> Wait, before before we go into merging merging topics, uh, let, let's keep today's uh, meeting in hindsight. Although it was like super productive, and I appreciate everyone's feedback. We did kind of uh, steer off of what the original topic was. No, uh, I don't mean it in in a bad way. It's just you know, the 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 point of having a topic or focusing on one thing is just defeated at that point. So let's focus on uh, uh, living in a society where diametric uh, uh, philosophies okay. or ways of thinking is still possible or not possible. We can we can explore that. So that that's my two cents on it. Uh, but again, we'll see how it okay. progresses. Yes, sure. I do have one comment, um, but I don't know if I think I should stop the recording and then say it. And that's no, what wait, I'm gonna do. Wait, uh, wait. I can answer the question. Can we do one? Well, we're, we're no, we're okay. Answers no. No, no. Just for, just for number three. For number three. Just because so look, I went back. I, I I watched the last video, self-contained system, and it was really interesting. But there's a lot of ground that you didn't cover that I thought for sure you would. So, in my opinion, I think that if we need to focus on action, you know, instead of speculating different systems of thought, we need to focus on for next week. If you if we do topic three here, which I think we are, uh, we got to focus on how that actually bleeds into everyday life, like and how you interact with other people, and you're trying to embody your own moral philosophy, and you're running into people who embody different moral philosophies. How does that work out in terms of job interviews? 
How does that work out in terms of trying to meet somebody you want to fall in love with? How does that work out in terms of, I don't know, making friends? I mean, these are the these are the aspects that I think could still be covered, like the actual practical, concrete aspects of it. Not just let's entertain different ideas in, in, in the, you know, the yeah. space. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Orlando. I guess you have to <laughs> come next week. Yeah, it must be so tedious. You, you listening? Are, are you regretting it now? Now that you're listening to Manzi? <laughs> no, I, I, no, no. This is the thing. Like, I, I would never get bored of talking about the same thing. Uh, in that regard, I'm like with food. I can eat the same food every single day, every single time, and I don't get bored of it. It's, I guess, a, a very nice mechanism I have. But, anyways. I do want to say something very quick, and I need to cut the recording before that. Uh, ah, yes. So, thank, thank you, you so coming. much. Thank you for coming. Uh, think about it next week. So watch us on social media, all the good stuff. We basically have everything except like TikTok, which, I mean, Nancy and TikTok, what? I think I'm going to install it right before leaving the position. I think that. Yeah, that, 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 that can be a very good so, idea. Oh, look, think uh, about yeah. China. No, <laughs> so, anyway, think about it. Think Mr. about Mazzy it. Doing. Think about it. And officers. I want the philosophy club officers to make TikToks where they are mouthing my dancing. No, uh, 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 sorry, I, I cannot hear you, Mazzy. I'm so sorry. And well, yes, okay. And well, again, if you're interested in becoming more involved with the Philosophy Club, if you want to get the emails directly to your email, uh, just let me know. Uh, give me your email, and if I already have it, so say, hey, please add me to the email list, and there is that. Thank you so much again, and think about think it. Think about it. Think about it. Ta -ta -ta. Think about it.